Welcome to the happy hour with Jamie and Sarah. Today is episode two, and we are focusing on real estate horror stories. It's a spooky time of year around here, so we thought we'd dive into some of our craziest rental property stories. Um, These are all true and real, and they are not your basic cockroach infestation stories. Yes, we are going to tell stories of sewage, drug dealers, (laughs) failed foundations, and deceased tenants. So if that interests you, stick around. This is going to be a fun episode. Before we get any further into the episode, we wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, Amico. So around here, we love to renovate homes. And one of the biggest differences you can make in a home is choosing good lighting. It can take a home from just being average to just feeling luxurious and rich. And so what we do is we use these recessed lights. Um, They're super easy to use, but it basically just adds a whole lot more modern uh, lighting and feel to your space. So in our current house, we used a ton of these. We put them in each bedroom because none of the bedrooms had ceiling lights. They were all uh, just wired to a wall switch. So if you had a lamp, you could turn mm-hmm. that on, but there was no ceiling lights. So these were a great solution for that. And we also put them in our kitchen just to brighten it up and add a nice modern feel. So they make a huge, huge difference. So we'd highly recommend these. As you can see here, it's basically like this little thin wafer disc can light. So the traditional can lights, take, you know, 12 inches of space up in your joists where these can be put anywhere. So they're extremely versatile. All you have to do is drill a hole in your drywall uh, and then you run the wires and then it has this little box that you uh, hook the wires up to. Um, and then this box will connect um, to the wafer disc. So it's a pretty simple process, pretty simple setup. And then uh, what's great about these ones is you can choose the color temperature. So anywhere from 2,700 Kelvin all the way up to 5,000 Kelvin, which is more of the cool blue temperature light. We prefer the lower temperatures like 2700 Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Um, Just give it the more homey warm feel, but it's great to have that option. So no matter what space you are renovating, uh, you can have a really nice, clean, modern look. So if you are looking to up your lighting game in your home, we would highly recommend these. Uh, We will leave a link below in the description. So feel free to check that out. Um, As Sarah said, we've been investing in real estate for about 10 years now. I have a lot of interesting stories. So Let's start with the most recent, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. So our first story that we are going to be covering is something that happened to us very recently um, with our property that we've owned for about three years now. It's a four unit. um, And this involved us trying to sell the property originally because it just wasn't making us very good money. Yeah, a lot of the, or all of the utilities are included, I should say. It's a big old house split into four units. So we pay for heat and electric for all the units. Um, so we have a lot of expenses and it just, the tenants weren't paying. We had lots of vacancies. So we're like, let's just, let's just sell it. Yeah, we really just felt like it was kind of a cursed property. Like tenants were just constantly moving in and out, not paying mm-hmm. um, well. So we, tra- we put it on the market. We listed it a little high because we wanted to get a good proper or a good price for it. So we got a note back from one of the realtors walking through the property with the people interested in buying it, saying that uh, their clients were not interested in buying the property because there was a deceased tenant in it, which we yes. did not know. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't really know the full story when yeah. we got that text and it freaked us out. Um, but apparently emergency services were there yeah. and they showed up and it was quite the scene. Um, we don't know the details, but we just know that uh, we had a tenant uh, who was younger uh, yeah. who, had, who had passed away and um, it was a total shock. She was only in the unit for a couple months. So it yeah. was uh, just a freaky time. And, you know, we've never been in that situation. So it's like, what do you do? Um, but I think, you know, our management company, that's one of those situations we were super glad to have a property manager right. to handle all the, you know, communication, finding relatives and figuring out uh, what the next steps were. Um, I think that situation ended as graciously and easily as it could have gone. Um, I, because, you know, and a couple months later we were able to, to list the property or list the unit again, but, um, it was yeah a little bit freaky. So after that happened, we decided to take the house off the market and kind of reevaluate. Um, we obviously had some things to take care of. Mm -hmm. Um, and we also found out through that time that potentially one of the other tenants, um, was a pretty major drug dealer and may, may have even been responsible for the other tenant's death. We don't know. That was the, the theory. Uh, and so he, 
this other person yeah. was a inherited tenant. It was the last inherited tenant from the property. So we bought it with tenants in it. Uh, you know, we didn't raise the rents or anything. We just let them, let them be. And people kept leaving and we're like, that's kind of weird. I Come wouldn't want to live out. in a house with a drug dealer. Yes. Either. <laughs> so they got to, they, they got to the bottom of it that they, they think he was dealing drugs. And so we had to evict him. Uh, and then the whole time we're worried about, okay, is he going to pour concrete down the toilet? We don't know. You know, like we don't, drug dealers, you know, not the most stand up people. They're pretty <laughs> unpredictable, you know? So we, uh, yeah, but that was a scary we were time as well. Expecting the worst. Uh, there definitely was some damage done just from him living there, but he nothing out crazy out of the ordinary. Crazy, we we got, we kind of got out lucky with that one, but yeah, so that was just a, uh, a very uncertain time. So lots of vacancies, Lots of turnover, lots of expenses. And we also were trying to split the electric in that mm-hmm. property this whole time. It took us over two and a half years to get it split because the first contractor, uh, we gave him a deposit to buy the little box thing <laughs> and he never bought it or he just, it didn't work out with him. So <laughs> he, I think he got a thousand free dollars. I don't know. But um, the second contractor um, claimed, and I, I think I believe him, but that because it needed five meters on the outside, it was going to take like nine months for the, the part to come in. So we, we put in a huge deposit last December because we had a pretty good year with the rental properties. Um, I think for it, tax purposes. For tax purposes, yep. Yes. So we, we knew we were going to have to split the electric, so we gave them a $9,000 deposit uh, for the work. It was a $13,000 project total. Um, and then we found out, oh, it's not going to be in until August. So we actually recently just got the electric split, finally. And that's going to save us about $400 a month uh, in paying electric. Right. So that'll pay itself off in, you know, a couple of years. So, but kind it was, of it a, was nightmare. a journey. It, <laughs> it was, was a journey getting yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yes. but so it's something you don't expect to happen yeah. with owning a rental property is dealing with the things we just described. Mm-hmm. So... But we always buy yeah. the, the cheapest property possible, which is is why we come across some of these crazy stories. Yeah. Um, this particular property we paid 150000 for, which was really cheap even at the time. Um, but it was because of nothing was split. So right. we knew by putting the you know $13,000 into having it split, it was going to pay off. So the property right. now um, is worth at least 250000 So, you know, in that time period, we didn't make any real money from the cash flow or from the rents uh, because those were all going to our expenses. But uh, we got a good chunk of equity out of it. So it was worth that hassle and headache and all the the drama. We think. I think. We think. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you don't really get that money unless you sell it or borrow on the property, but that's just kind of, um, but we, you know, equity has made a huge difference in our life and it's totally. how we've been able to um, buy so many properties. So. Yeah, we typically will buy properties and we'll hold on to them. That's usually our strategy unless a couple different houses we have bought and after a few years have sold them because they have just been what I think is a cursed property. <laughs> or cursed or they are worth a crazy six amount figures more. more than we paid for them. In that case is, is another time when we've sold, but um yeah, to so buy more. To buy more. Yeah. Right. So, so we kind we of just typically, always roll things over and, and uh yeah, yeah, keep investing, but moving money around to make more of it. Well, why don't but we tell them about another cursed property? How about the college? One? One. Oof. Okay, so college. So these properties, we call them by the streets that they're named on, typically. Which maybe we shouldn't for. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. College is yeah. It was I on know. a street called College. Yes, that's fine. Anyway, college was maybe our second rental ever. It was, was it? Yep. So yep. early on in our marriage. And this was a cursed property, don't you think? It could have been. It might. It had some bad juju. I think it, it was, had. Uh, it well, it was a two unit, two. I think three two bedroom. Be, two bedrooms or a two bedroom and a three bedroom. I think right. Yeah. So yeah. it was a bigger house, um, a pretty cute historical home. Um, the weird part about it is it had a half. What would you call that? Not it a. It was basement. an underground structure. It was like a a foundation of a garage a pole barn garage but, but you it, could only see the roof uh, from yes. the road 
So it was fully underground, no windows, very sketchy. It was maybe like 50 feet by 30 feet, so pretty large. Pretty large. And then when you, you could access it from the garage, from the other garage, mm. and when you walk down into this basement-ish area, there's like a stage. So we're, and there's like art on the walls and stuff. I'm pretty sure they threw some ragers Some in punk there. rock, yeah, concerts down there for sure. Yeah. Plus there was a whole grow room area of the basement, mm. very le- legit looking kind of they had a padlock on it they had a padlock well and it was like a 10 by 10 room with what 100 plugs yeah yeah it was definitely a grow operation yes so that was i mean that was we knew not really the curse part it It was just kind of strange we we knew that and that's that's why we got it cheap because people were looking at this house being like what is going on with this property yeah but we were like i'm sure it's fine (laughs) but that's just the surface that's just the beginning that it got much worse um, while we were fixing up the property, when we were demoing it out, we found some needles, some in the like for things. some reason you were up in the ceiling or you reached your hand up for the something. The drop ceiling. The drop yeah, ceiling. Was, yeah. Oh, did you tear it down? Yeah. I and a bunch it. of needles came down with it. Syringes, um, actually. Maybe a couple of needles. Not like used needles, fortunately, but it was it was nasty. Yeah. Um, some dirty magazines, <laughs> some gross stuff. Kind of definitely like kind of skeeved out. Yeah. Yicked out. When we were demoing it out, but that was okay. <laughs> I mean, we, again, we knew what we were getting into when we bought the property. How much did we buy college We for? bought it for $45,000. Yes. So, And this is a property we ended up selling a few years later. Maybe should have kept it. It's probably, probably worth 250 to 300 now. Yeah. But that's okay. We, yeah. We've made mistakes. But anyways, um, <laughs> once we got it all fixed up, at least the bottom unit, um, I was fixing up the top unit. And I forgot to pay the water bill. What? So they turned the water off. Yeah, you didn't know that? No. How did you forget to pay the water bill? I just never switched into my name when we bought it because we bought it. Move. It was, yep. <laughs> so they turned the water off uh, while I was fixing it up. Um, oh, they turned it back on in the middle of the night. And I was fixing the bathroom up there and I had some stuff in the sink. And the sink apparently was turned on. So... <laughs> And I show up in the, in to the property in the morning to start working. After we had just finished the bottom unit, yeah, like yeah. fresh everything, yeah. paint, drywall, everything. I, I walk into some dripping, hearing in the some bottom dripping unit. noise, which is never a good thing. So went back to the bathroom and there's water coming out of the light fixtures, <laughs> out of the plugs from the upstairs, all the way down through that bathroom into the basement, drywalls hanging everywhere. It was horrible. So we had major, I mean, not major. It was mostly just drywall we had to repair because it wasn't dripping long enough for wood to rot. But, you know, a freshly finished bathroom, got to read drywall. It was was very rough. Yeah, well, that was, I mean, totally our fault, technically. Yeah. Like a lot of these stories that we'll share are definitely not our fault. But that one for sure was. But um, But that was was frustrating. We did, yep. So trying to get it, you know, on the market for rent. That happened, and then the first day the downstairs tenants moved in, uh, there was a sewer backup, and I found out on the way back from getting my taxes done, which is always a sad day, anyways. <laughs> and um, so, you know, 11 p.m. that night, I'm in the basement, vacuuming up sewage, trying to bleach down everything. It was horrible. Well, how deep was the sewage you were walking through? Like, like you know, an inch maybe, nothing crazy. But it was like... Sewage. Legit yeah. sewage. Yeah. And it was in there. Well, and I had to, so yeah, as they were moving in, I had to go up, it had backed up into the bathroom, so I had to clean out the bathroom for them. Yeah. It was, it was humbling. You're walking through their brand new apartment in your poop yeah. shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. yeah, that property, and then there was a few other things where we had, like, tenants in for a couple months, and they ruined the car- brand new carpets, stuff like that. So we that's, did, that's why we decided to sell it. That stuff is so typical, though. I think at the time we thought, like, we were getting screwed. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, let's just sell it. This property stinks. And Mm -hmm. then I think now we wouldn't have made Mm -hmm. that same choice because we realized, like, that's just part of, Mm -hmm. there's just those kind of expenses all the time, especially with turnover. Well, and we wanted to take that money to invest in Muskegon, which is a different city by us. We thought there was opportunity there. So we were hoping to move the money around, Uh um, but that... We probably would have been better just to keep that property. So we sold it for one seventeen, was it? Yeah. So yeah, Doubled but money, like Jamie but, said, yeah. it's probably worth two fifty now. But this was maybe five years ago, right? Longer than five minutes. Oh man, I don't. Who can tell? Eight. 
Anyway. I don't know. Long time ago. But um, yeah, so there's, yeah. you know, you do it that happened. kind of stuff. Yeah. But let's see what else we got. How about our biggest missed opportunity now that we're uh, talking about prices? So the things that make me sick the most is like when we were first starting to look at homes to purchase in 2012, um, we came across tons of properties, or I shouldn't say tons, quite a few properties in our area, which was like a really nice downtown heritage chill, like historical district Mm -hmm. for like 12 to $40,000, like very cheap, cheap, beautiful homes Mm -hmm. that were destroyed. But the area was still up and coming. It wasn't great at the time. No, it wasn't. But we knew it was up and coming, Mm -hmm. but we were still kind of like freaked out. Like, I don't know. We'll see. We took our our time with it. Yeah, Our realtor at the time was not a he didn't specialize in like investment properties. He, he, he mostly helped people buy and sell new homes. He, he had no idea. He wasn't like in the investor mindset. So he was worried about our safety. <laughs> That's what his big thing was. He thought crime rates were really bad or which, too big of a project. I think he underestimated mm-hmm. us a little bit. Yeah. Come on. We can rip down some know. drywall. We can do some stuff, but so yeah, there's quite a few properties that we will drive by now and we're like, oh, we looked at that house and we were like, nah, not 30,000 <laughs> <laughs> that we're like, what were we doing? We should have scooped up all of those. And we scooped up a couple, but like we totally missed out. There's this one house that was $17,000. It was a two unit, I believe. Right. Yep. And whoever bought it, bought it for that years ago and made it into this gorgeous, historical, like most beautiful property you've ever seen. Victorian. Like, just, oh my, yeah. I mean, it was beautiful even then, but it was like destroyed. I mean, I'm well, sure the, they had to put a hundred into it or more. Yeah, I mean, so the roof had failed. So there was water damage inside and that was kind of why we didn't buy it. And honestly, at the time we probably couldn't have aff- afforded to out of pocket pay for a new roof anyways. Right. But that's kind of why he had discouraged us from from buying the property. But now, yeah, that house is worth at least a half million. Probably a half million dollars. At least. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, oh. Probably getting, yeah, 4500 a month in rent. At least. Yeah. It's, yeah. Kind of, kind of makes you sick a little bit inside with some of those, but. But that's okay. I mean, people can say the same thing about wishing they would have started five years ago because of yeah. property prices are crazy now, you know, so everybody has those moments, but there's quite a few houses that I like lament over because I'm yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. so pretty. We should have just yeah. should have gotten it. But those those uh, historical homes don't come without their own issues, though. Oh, totally. We bought one. A few, and, uh, yeah. We lived there for a while. That was our first house hack. It was actually a duplex. A duplex and um, again, bought it with tenants in it. After we moved in, we found out the tenants uh, who lived below us worked at a restaurant or a bar. Uh, came back at 3 a.m. and partied with his friends every night. When we were doing wedding photography, we had to be up, you know, 6, 7 a.m. and work yeah. a 14 hour day. And then yeah. they're Friday blaring their music. Yeah. <laughs> That's just part of living with people. Right. But. We didn't, we didn't know what we were getting into with the, the house hack, but, yeah. um, and then that property had a bad foundation. We bought a property on purpose with a bad foundation. Well, we knew that. We knew that. That's why nobody else wanted it is because yep. it had a really bad foundation. Yep. So it was $125,000 in a pretty like good area, uppity yeah. area, which was very cheap at the time. Um, and so we paid to have the foundation fixed, we- but. Yeah, we were a little misled, though, when we... Yes. So this is one of those houses where you walk in. The foundation was so bad that the floors were, like, wavy. Like a bowl. Like, it was probably... Yeah. At least six inches down in the middle. Oh, at least. Like, Like if you put a marble, it would, like, like fly across the room. Like, you're in, like... Alice in Wonderland or like mystery yeah. spot or something. It was, it was bad. Like I had to put things under all different table legs and chairs to like make it level in the whole yeah. house. It was just pretty messed yeah. up. So we were like, oh, no big deal. We'll pay the, you know, 13,000 to have the foundation fixed. And that 15, 15 yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then that'll fix the floors, which they told us like it should level out the floors. Yeah. They're going to basically jack up the, the, Foundation, jack up the floors from the basement and, mm-hmm. and uh, secure the foundation where it had crumbled, which they did, but it didn't really change the aesthetics at all. It was still very much. Yeah. 
but, crazy curvy yeah. floors. Yeah. Yes, but then the house was secure from not crumbling. Yes. Or de- yeah. But that was our like our first major major home repair. That we've that was more than we'd ever spent on any home yeah. repair. And uh, the Especially, fact that it didn't yeah. fix the visual part was really disappointing to us. Yeah. Because we were going to keep that house forever. We were going to, even if we, um, you know, wanted to move on to the next house, we were going to keep that as a rental. But mm-hmm. it was... Uh, well, why did we sell it then? Just because visually well, it wasn't pretty? I mean... I just, I, I felt like this house is a piece of crap. And like, <laughs> I would go down in the basement. It was a Michigan basement. So I'd go down with like a bucket of cement every once in a while and like mix them up and <laughs> smear it on the walls. Like fill Why the cracks. did you do that? Because well, it was crumble. It would fall. Like and there would be sand behind it. it. Yeah, just the old Michigan basements. They, <laughs> if you know, if you that. don't know what the term Michigan basement is, look it up. It's, it's kind of funny. It's like dirt floors, <laughs> like dirt walls. It's yeah. I don't know how some of those old houses still are standing, but that's um, funny. So, anyways, and we doubled our money. We definitely had a six figure we profit when we ended sold up it. So selling that one because we had dreams of um, other things that we wanted to move that money around and we needed the money. So that was a place we could get it. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason we've sold properties before is if we had to have a reason because we need that money in our hands instead Mm -hmm. of just an equity Mm -hmm. um, to invest somewhere else. So that Mm -hmm. was why we sold it, I think was the main reason. But we also had a, a, our first child during that time. So Mm we, the uh, duplex life we were kind of done with house hacking yeah so. we lived there for a couple of years but it, it was a lot harder with a kid it yeah. just didn't feel as safe or as homey yeah going back it but, was an up down duplex so our neighbors lived above us um if i could go back i think we could have stuck it out longer if we would have gotten a townhouse style like side yeah. by side because then the Those noise isn't as much of an issue and you feel like you have your own your own place you know you know what i forgot about that property is the day that that tenant moved out and we went to go look at like the damage that had been done uh-huh we went down there with some friends just to look at it and our dog came with us and all of a sudden we look over and our dog is literally just eating pills off Mystery the ground. Pills, yeah. <gasps> and we were like, Oh my words. So we quick ran out. We got him the activated charcoal. We're like making him throw up in the backyard. And uh, what is it? Hydrogen peroxide. Yes. It apparently makes him throw up and he did. And, and he was, he's still here with he's still us alive so. seven years later. So you never know what you're going to find. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, should we move on to pests? Oof. I mean, how often do you think we have a cockroach problem in one of our rentals? Is it almost um, monthly? Um, it's pretty often, at least a couple times a year we have cockroach infestations. infestations. So keep in mind the properties we own are not, uh, in a class areas or B class, even they're probably C to D class. So like lower income, um, not high crime. Typically we try to avoid that, but yeah. Um, it just comes with a lot more maintenance issues and things that, that go wrong. So uh, cockroaches are, are fairly common, but yeah, I feel like that's not even that bad. I, well, a lot of times looking at these properties, when we go, you could literally see fleas jumping off the floor trying to get on you. So you'd have to bug spray up before you go on the properties. Yeah, it's pretty scary. <laughs> it's pretty, Sarah, I, Sarah stopped kind of coming with I me stopped after coming. We own quite a few properties that I have definitely never stepped foot in. because Yeah, how many How many have you never stepped foot in? Almost all of them now, probably. Yeah, I've, at least three. Because once I it. started having kids, it was like, I'm not bringing my baby there. Yeah, right. You know, so... so. Um, so you would go with yeah. our realtor slash contractor slash mentor. Yeah. And there was one house <laughs> I fixed up myself back. So when we first started, I would do most of the work myself trying to save money, you know, get that sweat equity out. Um, so one time I was trying to run an, a wire for an electric stove and I was crawling through the crawl space on my stomach and then I look around and I realize I'm crawling through piles <laughs> Of cat poop, just Ugh. piles of cat poop and dead mice that the cat had killed and just left. Yes, Ew. so <laughs> it was uh, one of the more gross experiences of my life. It was yeah. it was very very bad. Um, you continued on though, huh? I did. I did what, you had, I did to what do. I had to do. I did. Were you wearing like a mask at least? Yeah, I was wearing a mask. Okay, um, and that was a house that we <sighs> bought and it sat for at least two months because they kept having to go back to bomb it for fleas and mm. cockroaches before they would even step foot. The, the management company wouldn't even go in the house cause it was so bad. So yeah. 
was uh, pretty nasty. Pretty gross. <laughs> we have a house. We have one house, actually. Our first rental we ever bought has the same tenants in it mm-hmm. um, nine years later. Yeah. And um, they're great, except they both... The, they're the one hat guy who loves cats, and uh, he lives upstairs. So every time he changes his cat litter, he just dumps it over the side <laughs> of the porch, down, and now on the side of the house, there's like a pile of cat litter, used cat litter. It's like I mean, 10 feet wide by 6 feet tall now. It just keeps no, growing. No, that was like five years ago. That's how big it was. Could be bigger now. It's definitely bigger, unless it disintegrates over time. <laughs> yes. It's pretty gross, but... Those guys usually pay. <laughs> usually. And yeah. yeah, we don't typically, we, we like keeping tenants happy. We definitely don't um, even really charge market rent most of the time. So they, uh, they've been there a long time. And if, if they're going to stay there, then that's better for us than vacancies yeah. and turnover. So, yeah, when it comes to landlording and rental properties, a lot of people have like the evil landlord yeah. mentality. Uh, which is understandable, but I feel like they get a little confused because there's two different types of landlords. There's the small mom and pop ones like us who um, we want to just keep tenants happy and in a property as long as possible because the biggest profit killer for us Mm -hmm. is when they leave because um, we have to spend money to do new carpet, new paint, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, so it's very expensive when tenants leave. Um, So we just want to keep them happy even if we're not charging, you know, that market rent where – if you have a, a big corporation who owns a you know thirty unit building, yeah, their thought process is a little different because they bought it at when rents were you know X, so they have a, a plan that you know in five years we're going to sell it. So in that five year period, we're going to raise rents as much as possible and save our expenses as much as possible by not doing repairs or letting stuff go. Yeah, and then on paper it looks like they added value to the property because the net income is higher so then they can sell it for a lot more money. So they, their goal is to, to make, you know, their millions on the sale. And so they, in yeah. that process, neglect the tenants on purpose almost. So that's kind of the difference between a mom and pop landlord like us yeah. and a slum lord, slum lord, skeevy guy. Yep. So that's a, that's a big misconception though. Yes. So we try our best to take care of our tenants and to just, keep their houses as well kept as we possibly can. They have to do their part as well, but if they have problems, we always, we take care of it. So, yep. Yep. so. which happens a lot, which is why our expenses are pretty high, but yep. we want to take care of the property and we want our tenants to stay and be happy and healthy too. So, mm-hmm. but we have higher expenses than probably most people because we do just, we just take care of it. If there's bugs, we take care of it. If there's something you know, whatever's going on, we just, we take care of it. So Mm -hmm. that costs money. Yeah. And so I think, you know, one, Mm -hmm. one big mistake I think we've made that we've learned from, or just at least gotten more comfortable with is we would always buy properties, the cheapest property we could with tenants in it. Usually the tenants were bad tenants when we bought it. And so we, you know, we expect to only have to put this much money into a property, but it's usually thousands more than that because the tenant who's there either doesn't pay or doesn't take care of the property. Um, we had a house we had squatters in once, and then that same, it was a duplex, the same per, uh, property, the tenant in the back was stealing power from the front unit. <laughs> it was a mess, you know, and so you buy those kind of properties, you're going ha- to have to deal with a lot of crap. But for us, it still has been worth it because of the yeah. equity growth and um, stuff like that over time, so... Um, and yeah. now we basically have these houses we bought for next to nothing that are kind of like money printers. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a balance, but yeah, well, our strategy originally is that we really didn't want to go into debt or at least not a lot of debt. Mm-hmm. So and we didn't we have had, a ton of money. Either yeah. So we had yeah. to kind of pick these properties that were cheap enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but those have definitely grown in value over time. They maybe aren't million dollar homes now, but they still are good properties. So we've had some, we've had some funny circumstances happen to us too. We've had some, I don't know if it's funny. Well, they didn't think it was funny. funny. So, (laughs) all right. So this one house we bought in Muskegon Heights, that was like, we thought it was going to be the next, you know, gold mine properties are going to triple in value. Beach town. 
Beach Town, they didn't, long story short. <laughs> so there's a property we bought for $10,500 up there. Um, it was a one bedroom and it rented for 500 bucks a month. It was supposed to. <laughs> when we decided to get out of Muskegon, we sold all these properties. This particular property, um, I thought, had a garage behind it. We bought it with the garage, we thought. Well, we, we, buy thi- we bought that property without doing a survey. Yeah. So we just bought it. I mean, we didn't know. For 10000 I mean, bucks. we were like, yeah. we'll take it. Yeah. So, um, so when we listed it, I took a picture of the garage because... <laughs> we thought it was ours. It was the same color as the house. Thought it was ours. Was but we, it? Didn't, we didn't put it in the description or anything, but um, <laughs> we sold it. And the guy who bought it, the day after he bought it, parked his car in there. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Realized that the neighbor came over and started yelling at him because there wasn't his garage. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I don't know what you do about that, but because <laughs> he obviously bought it without doing a survey, too. Yeah. It did match the house in color and it wasn't nearby another. I don't know. It was we very didn't strange. Know. Well, didn't strange. he start like cleaning out the garage, too? Like, I cleaned up some like oh, boxes. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned it up because uh, before we yeah, sold it, I just went through and kind of cleaned it up and. But apparently the garage, I threw away some some boxes. So if that person sees this video, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it was totally an accident. But yeah, that's that was weird. We also had a house we bought in in Michigan. When we bought it, we knew the roof was in bad shape. Um, but then we got we had bad luck with tenants, and we just wanted to get we out. We wanted of to get out of Michigan. So bad. instead of replacing the roof, we're like, okay, we'll just sell it back to someone else with a bad roof. Yeah, and we weren't going to make... Did, we actually lost a few thousand. That's our only on house our we've ever lost money on, I think. Yep. Um, we just wanted to get rid of it, and so we did. But then the, apparently the day after, <laughs> literally, we sold the house, a tree fell on it. Well, isn't that good for them, though? Did they get, like, Maybe insurance? Maybe they can make an insurance claim. I mean... I don't know, but that's just, like... What are the chances, you know? That happened to another house of ours. The house we lived in had this big, beautiful tree that was kind of like a statement piece. Mm-hmm. And within a month of selling it, that massive tree, like we had a big storm and it crashed onto their house. Yeah. And that was bad. That was. That was sad. Yeah. Very I sad, mean, so they, I'm sure they, we had a newerish roof so, so they that got, they had probably got a insurance new, and new it's fine. Easily from insurance, but. But it seems like a lot of stuff happens right after we sell it and we're like, ee, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I you don't know. Man. So I'm, I, I hate trees. Jamie's near a tree house. I love trees, but I hate trees near houses. So every house we buy, okay. make sure to cut them all down. It's true. I'll I've, spend whatever I have to because it's like there's a tree. Get it out of here. Well, because you <laughs> get you can have foundation problems. You squirrels. Can have squirrels. We had squirrels in an attic because of that. We you could have termites. They're just he's a tree hater. Your roof, go to, you, um, your roof will go bad faster. All that kind of stuff. It's they're just bad. So. That's like your one thing. You'll turn down a house if you're like, too many trees. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And I'm like, what? I feel like pretty much monthly or every other month, we kind of have random little things happen. Sometimes they're scarier than others. Mm-hmm. But that is, you kind of have to have the stomach for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've learned that. Yeah, I think knowing knowing what I know now about rental properties, though, like you got to buy them at a discount to make it mm-hmm. worth it because... With all the things that can go wrong, if I if I had a property and I paid full price f- for it, especially right now with interest rates and everything, yeah. um, your people always underestimate their repair cost and, and maintenance costs, including us. Yeah. So like, if if I was to go pay, you know, two hundred fifty thousand for a newish or for a duplex right now, and then have no cash flow, yeah, it just it just wouldn't be worth it to me. So. You always got to buy properties at a discount. Yeah, we've invest. slowed way down on buying in the last few years mm-hmm. because prices are, are rough, but it still is possible, but yeah. it's it's hard. It's you got to find harder. a deal. I was just running some, some numbers the other day, and you know if you buy a, a duplex for $250,000 and you can rent it out for $2,500 a month, your mortgage is still going to be like almost $1,500. Yeah. So, and we used to always use the 50% rule, which states that half of your gross rents will go towards expenses. So mm-hmm. that would be, you know, $1,250 going towards expenses each month. And that includes your taxes and insurance. So right. then you have $1,250 left over and your mortgage is 14, 
65 or something it was. Right. So right off the bat, you're break even and that. And hope nothing and hope major nothing, yeah. goes wrong. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like that great of a deal right now, which is why we've considered Airbnb. Um, but that has its own risks. And so it's, yeah, it's rough out there for investing in real estate. Yeah. But we have another side hustle we're working on right now. We sure do. And it's an exciting one. And so um, we've been kind of keeping it under wraps mostly because I don't want to dilute it too much, to be honest, because it's, <laughs> it's that good. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I never thought would be possible Mm-hmm. for such little investment and time. So um, stay tuned for that because we're going to be, we have a, a little crash course that we are going to release in about a week um, that tells you our whole strategy, how we've been able to build it up to a four mm-hmm. to $6,000 a month business. Um, and we started in April. So. And it's passive. Once you get it built up, it's totally passive. So yep. you can continue to build it, um, but it, yeah, it's it's good stuff. So and you're basically, um, I'll just give you a hint. You're just making one to two minute videos on your cell phone, reviewing products sold on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Um, and it works well with our pallet side hustle. We, yeah. So, so we're going to be revealing that and, um, sending out our crash course here in the next week or so. So it be sure to sign up for our email list. Cause that's going to be, you'll be the first to know on there. And you'll probably get a Um, discount too for being on the email list. So So that is coming. So if you are looking for ways to ramp up that income each month, we think that this is the place to start Mm -hmm. um, is with this new secret side hustle. So stay tuned for that. Do you think our stories were spooky? Were they spooky enough for you? Ooh, I brought back some memories. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like we left out quite a bit. We do. Yeah. We've, yeah. Lots of gagging and gross stuff. Gross stuff, man. So... Well, thanks for listening, guys. We hope you found it uh, enjoyable, fun to listen to. Um, Again, we're not trying to discourage anyone from investing in real estate, but just uh, be aware that we personally have gone through just about everything I think that can go wrong. Don't say that. You don't know. Murphy's Law. I don't know. Cross your fingers, I guess. But we've dealt with a lot. And um, yeah, so uh, let us know in the comments if you're on YouTube, if uh, what else you'd like to hear about um, real estate wise, because uh, as, as we've mentioned before, it's changed our lives financially more than, than anything else that we've done mm-hmm. uh, entrepreneurial wise. So totally. Um, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.